that await no longer. Greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I am your host, Joseph, a.k.a. Mr. Bad Bit, and it is here where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest, the greatest, in all things PlayStation. Of course, you can find this show wherever you get your podcast services or at Bad Bit Games on YouTube. And if you like what you hear, please, please, please drop us a five-star review on iTunes or consider giving us a buck over at patreon.com slash bad bit. So with all that said and with all that out of the way, the greatest co-host whoever is, whoever will be, Mr. Kyle Stevenson, how are you, sir? I'm doing pretty great. I am the closer and closer we get to Friday, yeah. the more and more I feel like a samurai. Yeah. I am so ready for Ghost of Tsushima. Dude. I'm I- so ready. The talk with Brock had me so... Had had my hype even bigger than what it already was for this game. Yeah. I'm so ready. Yeah, and if anybody missed it, we did a Ghost of Tsushima review preview where we we took your questions, viewer questions, we asked Brock his thoughts on Ghost of Tsushima, and we had a really awesome time. It was a really good show we put on, and that is literally the episode before this one. So go check it out. It's it's real easy. Yeah, and yeah. I'm so on board because when he was Sorry. just like, <laughs> what did you hear? What did you hear? <laughs> I forgot there was something under my desk and mm-hmm. I kicked it. Oh, you stubbed the toe? Uh, here's the thing. When he mentioned, like, the Assassin's Creed elements mixed with, like, he was giving references to Arkham when it oh. come to, came to the combat of this game, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm so in. Like, Friday when, yep. can't come soon enough. The moment he said Arkham, I was like, okay, that's a comparison I did you not realize. And I was like, up. Yes. Light bulb, boom! Yeah, I literally Hallelujah. saw that moment. Uh, with that, usually, listen, we got a awesome show. Not a whole lot to talk about, but what we are talking about is some awesome stuff. We got some patents uh, uh, hinting to some backwards compatibility for the PS5. And when I mean backwards compatible, I'm not talking about PS4. We're talking about PS3, PS2, PS1. Backwards compatible, possibly. With the PS5, we're going to be talking about how Sony is preparing to sh- produce even more PlayStation 5s than predicted and why. And of course, we're going to be talking about that Marvel's Avengers beta date and, of course, that Ubisoft press conference, man. And Ghost of Tsushima reviews. It's going to yeah. be a great episode. But before we do, usually each and every week, we start the show with what you've been playing, right? Warm up, get everybody accustomed to our lovely voices. But since... PlayStation has decided for the summer that they're not going to prepare the drop with us. We're going to kind of just that, that segment's going to be on vacation and we'll put mm-hmm. what you've been playing towards the back end of the show. Today, I want to talk about what you've been feeling because you, you raised something very interesting to me. You said you were, you were upset with me, sir. I was very Twitter? angry. Why? Very angry with Why you. Why were you upset at me? <laughs> <laughs> You're like a little schoolgirl, like why? <laughs> what did the um, big big bad man do, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, there were rumors going around about the PS5 getting a date revealed mm-hmm. and a price or whatever. I believe that was on Monday. Yep. And um, I I thought it was. It was cool the the amazon splash page finally Mm -hmm. went live with it i was like oh my god it's happening Mm -hmm. and i got really really excited because i want to know if i can afford it (laughs) and (laughs) make sure i can grab a a a pre-order for this thing and then i scroll over to my good old buddy co-host of the trophy room mr bad bit joseph moran Uh uh and i see you post that captain america gif of him sitting down in his chair (laughs) with so you thought we were getting a date and price today, and I was so mad at you. I was in my head. Uh, I was thinking, how dare this co-host of a PlayStation show not be excited for this and try and shoving it in our faces that we're upset right now? Because I love chaos, Kyle. What do I love? More I know than you love chaos, and that's why I, what I, I love about you. It. My I was tweets- just. I was so. No, let down is not the word. Yeah. I, I was, I was. Really? It was just, they teased us, right? They teased us a little bit. <laughs> you played yourselves. Bit. That's what happened. <laughs> because everybody was just like, so my cu- my uncle that works at PlayStation <laughs> <laughs> has this inside scoop. This guy who's never been, it's always, it's always 
when you see the headline, here's here's an inside scoop for you guys. All right? If you're ever thinking you're browsing the web, here's I want to see some video game commentary. If you see an article that says inside sources suggest this, nine times out of ten, it's fake. But if you click on it and you and you fell for that bait, when it says from a poster that's been right before, chances are they haven't been right before. <laughs> There's like no source to it. So don't get me wrong. I was excited. Yeah. I was super pumped. I was like, let's, let's get, let's do this. But at the same exact time, I'm like, let's all take a step back Mm -hmm. because it's from my, my uncle that works at PlayStation, you know? So we're, we were all like getting, getting each other pumped. The, the people that you should be upset at, Kyle, guess what? Yeah. It's, it's that gosh dang Jeff Grubb. Okay, because <laughs> Jeff Grubby Grub Grub five minutes before Jeff Grubb and Jez Corden, right? They're both stoking the flames of of these console wars of these console folks, right? Us included. Where like Jeff Grubb five minutes before, not even like where it was about to drop, the pre orders were supposed to drop. Jeff Grubb's like, well, I don't know much, but if they're going to drop it, it's going to be soon. And you're like, oh, it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then like today, Jess Corden's like, get ready. All in caps. And Xbox people lost their mind. So we're all being teased. Yeah. By the, these bourgeoisie games journalists. <laughs> we need to start can, tearing them down. You know? Can I just, can I just be real with you? Why <laughs> yeah. I think it would have been a good idea to do it on yeah. Monday? Why would it have been? I think it would have been so smart of PlayStation to do that a week before Xbox's show. So they could have the news, like, depending on how well it did in the price, whatever. Mm -hmm. Fastest selling pre-ordered system ever. You know what I mean? Like, to have it drop to kind of offset the the cool, exciting Xbox news, because I think they're going to come out and kill it next week. Oh, yeah, and we're we're all hoping that Xbox comes out, kills it, shows me Fable, gets me excited again. Makes me Apparently, there's Perfect Dark toys showing up at GameStops for sale. Oh, really? Huh. That's probably yeah. a hint right there. There you go. GoldenEye was better. Don't tease yourselves. But yeah, that's <laughs> cool. Uh, you know, for me, I, I would understand why they would do pre-orders first uh, or, or like that soon to get the the hype building. Yeah. But if I'm PlayStation and, uh, and to me, it just still doesn't make sense because you don't know how um, is the word advantageous. Like Phil Spencer is going to be with that, that those set of consoles because we know it's going to be more than one. Like what are the price? How 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 aggressive are they going to be? We don't know, and that's why I think PlayStation's being so coy with price. But if you were confident, and and, and this is why I believe these consoles are more expensive. Um, but you know, if you if if these consoles aren't that expensive, like four hundred, five hundred, right? If this is like a four hundred, three fifty nine situation, I would not be surprised. Very shortly after that Xbox event. PlayStation drops that price. They're mm-hmm. like, yeah, 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 all that velocity, whatever mumbo jumbo, bam. You know, that's what. If now, if I was Shu, that's what I would do. But yeah, I'm not. I got it. She was yeah, in the I Devolver just, Digital. He certainly was. I nailed and that. He prediction. liked both of my tweets, so we're pretty much best friends. We're getting him on he, the show next. He week. also liked my tweets as well. So like, let's we're do getting this. him on the show. This let's is confirmed. Let's do this. <laughs> end of 2020. Let's end on a high, let's end on a high note. I get Shuhei Yoshida on the show. All right. Year end of PlayStation. Talking to Shuhei Yoshida. Hell yeah. Let's yeah, I mean, if we're not having our hopes high, why not? You know, why have hopes at all? <laughs> So that yeah. way, uh, I'll stoke the fires now, so then yeah. when he doesn't come on, I'll use the Captain America gif <laughs> at you. <laughs> so, you thought... <laughs> uh, but, uh, like, to counter that thing, what you just said about PlayStation doing it after Xbox, mm-hmm. Xbox's reveal, um, I just feel like Sony's should switch it up, right? That's what they did last time. Mm. I feel like to make them feel more unpredictable, they would do it before yeah. and not wait for Xbox and then... Jim you know, Ryan's I'm a dancer, pretty, man. I'm pretty sure the prices are like set in stone. I would imagine at this point. Sort of, kind of. I would, I would right? think, sort of, kind of. Depending on who you are, you probably have a few dollars leaning which way or the other. But mm-hmm. again, we'll talk about that later when we get in the show when we're talking about that up in production. But yeah. before we do, I want to give a big shout out to our patrons over at Patreon.com 
slash bad bit. I want to once again thank our newest patron, Gavin Gafried. Thank you so much. Our gold producers, uh, Griffin West, Robbie Bobby Miller himself. Thank both of you. And our Silver Plus members, Marcus O'Neill, Ray Martinez, and JB the Purple Monkey himself. Everybody, thank you so, so much for your support. If we got you through a rough day at work, a rough day in general, and we've all had them as of recent, or even just a long car ride, man, even if it's just a buck, it really does help us out. It gets us awesome equipment like what I'm using right here, and it keeps the show getting better. You're making us better. No pun intended, Sean Capri. That just came out of my mouth. I apologize. We're going to have a lawsuit, and that's what Patreon's going to cover now. <laughs> it's that gosh dang lawsuit. Anyway, Kyle, it's time. To square up the gosh dang news. First bit of news comes from Kane Maher from VG247. Kane writes, Sony patent hints at cloud-based backwards compatibility for PS5. Sony recently filed a patent that looks a lot like a cloud-based backwards compatibility system for PS5. The patent originally appeared on Japan's platform for patent information website, having been officially filed on July 2nd. Although the drawings associated with it are captioned in Japanese, the patent description has translation support. Quote, Another trend growing in this industry relates to the development of cloud-based gaming systems, reads said description when translated. Such a system may include a remote processing server that is configured to execute a game application, receive input from a user, and communicate with a local thin client configured to display an image on a display. End quote. Dork. One of the drawings... <laughs> what a dork. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, shows a user playing a cloud-based video game according to an embodiment of the present invention. End quote. What a dork quote. What a, <laughs> I'm, I'm, whoever is talking like this has like the you know the pen protector in his pocket type of thing. Yeah, continue. I'm the, sorry. The, the calculator watch? <laughs> the power uh, button. He just has a Nintendo <laughs> power glove at all times. One of the images... <laughs> I had another joke loaded as I started reading. He's writing this down in his Wonder Book. <laughs> One of the images includes launch models for the PS1, PS2, and PS3 are quite clearly the subject for this section of the patent. According to the description, it, it appears that Sony is attempting to create virtual consoles within a console. It's not too dissimilar to the concept of an emulator, except in this instance, it would be legal and officially supported. The patent also mentions a new kind of sharing software that seems to allow players to post gameplay clips to the cloud. The word slices crops up more than once and likely refers to trimmed video clips. It also mentions creating mini games from these slices, introducing the potential for the game sharing function to be quite significant in the PS5 community. So I like how they're trying to exhibit what, you know, backwards compatibility. Put a PlayStation inside your PlayStation inside your PlayStation. Uh, Gavs Goatee writes in, he says, what are your thoughts about backwards compatibility in general? Personally, as a person who owns all PlayStations, it's rare where I actually power w one of them up to get some nostalgia. So it has always seemed more like a cool gimmick to me. Uh, in addition to that comment, we had a really awesome conversation in the Casa de Bad Bit Discord server. That's where I got said viewer question. You can, right there in the link in the description, join us. We're a fun bunch. Um, the community seemed kind of split on where they were when it came to backwards compatibility. You know, like, um, you know, some people were definitely for it. Some people like Gav, not so much. Uh, even like Grouchy Surge, he was just like, backwards compatibility was the reason why I was a PlayStation owner. And he's all about that backlog. That's in his gosh dang brand. So, Kyle, I want to go to you. We talk about backwards compatibility a lot mm -hmm. because PlayStation has been playing coy, kind of like he said, she said, but with patents. So where do you fall in line with backwards compatibility in the sense of we know we have it for PlayStation 4, so I'll be able to play Bloodborne on my PS5. But where are you where it comes to PS3, PS2, PS1? Is that also a necessity to you? I think it's so important. Yeah. Um, it's part of the reason this might be a little long in the tooth and probably not a good explanation. We're going to try it anyway. Do it. Uh, it's part of the reason why I'm a physical media owner. I, I, I think of it as preserving a legacy of some sort and like the history of PlayStation. Yeah. So the like I, I would always have access to these games no matter what because I own I own the disc. Yeah. So the fact that if they have these, which in my mind I picture like you. 
one of the menu, you just open the door and it's a couch with the PS3 in there and a PS2. <laughs> yeah. Like that kind of emulation type thing. Um, having that there, I think is super important to be like, hey, look at our long lineage of games and you want to see how Uncharted is not the best. Like Jack and Daxter or like. But yeah, like, hey, you want to see where Jack Naughty Dog Jack came out. from? Yeah. Go check out j- these Jack and Daxter games. Mm-hmm. Or. Uh, you want to see Sucker Punch? Like, go back to Sly Cooper. Like, it just as a way to show how far developers have come. And if you get that itch that you want to get a nostalgic fix and yeah. play these games again, like, there's so many times. I mean, that's the reason why I bought a 2DS XL because I wanted to play Dragon Quest Eight again or yeah. seven, eight, ten. I forgot which number it is. <laughs> Journey to the Cursed King. I'm having a blank with the numbers. But like instead of buying a PS2, buying a memory card, right. buying all that and by finding the disc, like just being able to have that on a streaming service and play it there, I think it was so nice. Yeah, and I think it is important in, in a lot of regard when we're talking about, you know, video games in general of where we've been the past 5 years is a tremendous leap in terms of i think this generation did a wonderful job of enhancing open worlds where i think in this next generation coming we're going to see what truly the vision of an open world is going to be like the lived in Mm -hmm. part of it uh where this i think we saw a perfection of narrative we've seen games explore different ways of telling that story whether it is in pieces like a breath of the wild or whether it is in one single take that is God of War, or whether it's a game that constantly challenges you, like The Last of Us Part Two, you're seeing more mature stories in this gen, where I think it's awesome to take a look at where we've been in the previous generations. Like, funny enough, uh, PlayStation Show, I know. I was playing Halo 3 the other day uh, on PC. I know, guys, I'm breaking character here. Bear with me. I or apologize. showing your true colors. Oh, how dare you, oh. sir. But, like, running that, and I had all the unlimited frames, and the game was even the best because of it. But, like, it brought me back to when I was in high school, and we literally got my our mother's approval to skip school so that we could play Halo. <laughs> And I remember, like, it brought me back to, like, seeing the lines of folks, you know, uh, just waiting outside for that game. Mm-hmm. And it, it it gave me that nostalgia. And, it, and, and seeing where that where that combat has evolved, but that ding, into the future is something to really appreciate. And yeah. I th- so I do think backwards compatibility is really important. Like, I would love to go back... As someone, truth be told, that got into the PlayStation generation with, you know, I entered the PlayStation generation during the PlayStation 3 blackout. There is so much, and I mean really joined as in like, this is my primary console, Mm -hmm. where I have missed so much in my PS2. You know, I have missed a lot my PS1 because that was my grandparents' system. That's how they enticed us to go over there. And, um, you know, there's a lot of games that I miss that I would love to go back to and at least visit, whether that's five minutes and going, oh, boy, Spyro looks bad. You know, mm. whether whether that is Siphon Filter, like, and, and going, woof, how, do, how were we able to do this? Yeah. It's still awesome that we have the ability to go back there, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, for sure. And, like, for... You know, when the E3, not E3, the EA show, like, I wanted to see SSX real bad, come back, EA big, like, to have the ability to go back and and play these games and be satiated with that because I have access to it and it's not like I have to dig out my old consoles and whatnot. And uh, I'm not lucky enough to have been able to... kept uh, to be able to keep my old consoles right because yeah. i i use my old ones to help pay for the new ones so that way i can keep playing the next iteration of games so i i don't have access to the multitude of library of games that i had mm-hmm. um and it's gonna it's way too expensive for me to get all that back now so the fact that i would have it digitally and be able to do it through cloud subscription service or whatever it is like yeah. hell yeah that's awesome and i think it is like like what what gav's saying is like it, it is a cool gimmick and i oh, think absolutely. it's to me like if you know i'm not going to die if i can't play like motor storm 
mm-hmm. right? You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I, via via backwards compatibility. I'm not going to die. <laughs> you know, I'm, yeah. that's not going to be the the thing that keeps me from buying a PlayStation Five. What's getting me to buy a PlayStation Five is Miles Morales, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's not that's that it, it's something that while I'm in the ecosystem, I can visit. It's one of those those little bonuses that people really do appreciate. And again, we say it a lot on the show P- props to Xbox for having yeah. a smaller, a uh, much smaller culture, but embracing it in a really awesome way. And their way is also through profits because, you know, when you take a look at backwards compatibility on Xbox, it is also quite limited. You can't play every single Xbox 360 game. You can't, you definitely can't play, you know, like counter strike, the original counter strike on your original Xbox via backwards compatibility. And not every single game is going to have that, you know, uh, smart delivery, ray tracing, you know, all the, all the frames per second for all your older games type of stuff. So the fact that, you know, some of it is just like you being able to play like brute force or the original fable or being able to purchase those games again and being able mm-hmm. to play them. I think that's, that's really cool. And I think that's where like, if, and, and my next question to you, it seems like this is a streaming service. Is this integrated with PS Now and this is how they try to get us through the door? And would this get you through the door? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm already a full believer in PS Now after mm-hmm. my my time with it. And it's I, I think it would be ingenious to have it be, you know, bundled up to PS Now, rebranding or change it to like PlayStation now then forever type thing that's a long <laughs> name but it makes yeah. sense well just uh, do it just do, like w- like that's a good thing for for like an ad it's like now yeah. then forever mm-hmm. yeah 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 uh, PlayStation hit us up you know what i mean <laughs> call um, us up man we got ideas <laughs> a lot of them yeah, not good I you're going to hear I, the next one it's not it's not great <laughs> yeah. i think ps now is for sure going to be the umbrella for this whole service and i i hope it's not an egregious amount per month. I hope or like if, a if, price. if so, I would be okay if it's just still the same nine ninety nine, yeah, backwards compatibility, all the things, uh, and you're able to download them. Mm. Oh man, I'm on board. <laughs> like, yeah, that's great. If if we're streaming them, that's it's that's it's not a big deal breaker. But like, if I'm looking at the next five years of PlayStation, um, I would love to. I would love to have just a physical game that like, you know, it's kind of works like with game pass where, Oh, you know, I connect to the internet for a second to just verify that I'm a member and then I could play the game and I have to worry about my internet connection. So mm-hmm. to me, I, yeah, nine ninety nine 99 would be awesome. And I think that's a great deal. And then being able to go like, yeah. And every single month we're going to give you a game or two through this service. It only enhances it as well. So I think that's yeah. a really great way and I really hope that this does become something because this is a really cool patent. And I, again, I, I really hope this this is a thing. But do mm-hmm. you? Is there any doubt in your mind that our backwards compatibility, at, and I mean our the 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 royal hour, is, is this the solution? Do you think, or do you think they're going to have something better? Like it's going to be hardware. Get a little PS2 Me- chip. They put it in there. Oh, like meaning you actually physically put the yeah. disc in? Yeah. Um, I think I think this is the, the cloud streaming way is the future, mm-hmm. based solely on the fact that there is a discless version PS5. Okay. So that way, no matter what version you have, you can still have it. You know what? Kyle, You'll still be able to do it. Me. Yeah. Sony, just call us up, man. We're yeah. We ain't doing nothing. We're in quarantine, wearing masks like adults. Yeah, man. Uh, Kyle. What's <laughs> I clap my hands like chop chop onto the next story. Chop chop Smithers. <laughs> Eddie Macucho over at GameSpot writes: Sony is now preparing nine to ten million PS5 consoles for production. Report says a new report from the Nikkei Asian Review has some interesting details on the PlayStation 5. The site's sources claim that Sony is significantly increasing its shipment production for the next generation console. This comes after a report from April said PS5's launch supply could be lower than PS4, but now that apparently will not be the case. The company has increased its production orders from 6 million units to 9 million units through the window, excuse me, 
though the window of time for their production was not mentioned in the report. These units will be assembled at Sony's new factory in Japan, where robots outnumber humans. Whoa. Separately, <laughs> what a sentence! <laughs> I did not read this beforehand. I was like, "Am I reading a Grisham novel or something?" Where robots outnumber humans. <laughs> Uh, separately, Bloomberg reported that Sony is aiming to produ- produce 10 million PS5 consoles at the end of 2020. Quote, The electronics giant has informed assembly partners and suppliers it's radically increasing orders for its next generation console. Though logistics may yet pose a challenge to delivering all those machines on time for the holiday shopping season, the people said, asking to remain anonymous. End quote, Bloomberg reported. Nikai's sources mentioned that order numbers could change in either direction based on market demand, so the 9 to 10 million figure is likely not set in stone. Mm-hmm. Neither report had any details on the breakdown of production orders for the PS5 by SKU. In addition to the standard PS5, Sony is producing a disc-free PS5 edition. Mm-hmm. On top of these two consoles, Sony will continue to manufacture the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. Now, what this article doesn't mention, um, and I was too lazy to add the Bloomberg article, there, some truth in this podcast, uh, <laughs> is that they're raising these figures not because they think, well, I probably this has to do with something. They, they probably have a lot of confidence in the PlayStation 5 and how it's going mm-hmm. to produce um, or, or how it's going to sell, but they're also... They're also putting COVID as a factor. Like the the article talked a little bit how logistics will be uh much more difficult. Like they can't just like put them on airplanes because right now there's a no fly zone into America, whatever you become. But like you know you could do like boat shipments, right? That's how uh that's how uh Apple did it with iPhone for a very long time. They just put it on huge craters and or, 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 craters. What they call <laughs> Fuck, what they crates, call crates, yeah, and they ship them off to America. Uh, but they're also figuring when it comes to COVID of how we're consuming media right now in the age of COVID, where we're all stuck in our home, mm-hmm. we can't go out there buy our avocado toast, so we're we're <laughs> able to buy these expensive consoles now because we're inside, we're not going out to the movies, and they're placing the bet well. Since we've seen so much revenue from, you know, just our online services and seeing online uptick up, you know, uh, a certain percentage that we think we're also going to be able to sell a certain percentage more. Do you think that makes sense in terms of 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 production or do you think that these things are going to sell based on the price? Like, does this mm. does this show you? Upping it to three million uh, units—that's not a small feat. They're expecting no. these things to sell. So, do you yeah. think they think a, a high price tag is going to just whatever? I'm stuck in my house. Give it to me, or do you think these things are going to be cheaper because they're producing so many? I'm leaning towards it it being cheaper yeah. uh, as that's why they're producing more. I feel like people already have enough ways to interact with media by not having a PlayStation already. Mm -hmm. So like if, if I'm trying to think of a better way to word that, like a lot of people have Chromecast subscribe, like smart TVs, you'd be able to do Netflix, whatever on there. I've watched Hamilton three times. Absolutely. As you should. (laughs) Um, And like, if, if you want to play games, you know, you're have a PlayStation or Xbox already. So Mm -hmm. like it's, I, to me, this tells me it. Oh man, I'm blundering big time. Go for it. Says yeah. that the price is going to be not a, a, outrageous. Yeah. What do you? That, so that's, yeah. It, it, in our final predictions for the price of this console, if it's not outrageous, where are we pricing these bad boys? Mm. We've heard rumors that like the Series X, gonna be four hundred bucks. And I remember just nine months ago, we're talking about these things costing 900 bucks, right? Like, yeah, right. Now Take we're a just, lease out on yeah. the house or mortgage. <laughs> like, you guys, come on. You gotta get a second job. So, uh, you what, know what would what be a think? baller what? move, Joe? What's that? If Xbox Series X is $400, mm-hmm. Sony being like, hey, guess what? PlayStation 5 is also $400. Yeah. You just go head to head that way. I, 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 I think if. My intuition is is true, and mm-hmm. the way they're ordering more to be produced is because of the price. I think four hundred dollars is the price. 
really. Where yeah. would you where would you put a discless console? Three fifty. Really? That's a bet. Well, okay, okay. So I still think here's here's another question to you. Okay, now we're playing the console wars. All right. Here you go. This is why you're here. Right? We get it now. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Dancing with fire. Uh, Xbox puts out this console at five hundred bucks. Right. Yeah. Where does PlayStation move? I don't think they do at all. I think it's four hundred no matter you what. You think it's four hundred no matter what? Yeah. Jesus. Why not? I okay. believe me that I met like a thirty percent, you right. know, confident with that four hundred dollar price tag. Yeah. But I think that would be a. Uh, it would be dope, just for me personally. Uh, cool. You're doing it for the sake of hype, and yeah. I, I, I like it. <laughs> to me, I'm still very much of like, if these consoles were cheap, we would have seen the price. So sure. we're, we're we're looking at 500 bucks, and sure. I think we're all kind of we're all preparing for it. And I definitely mm-hmm. think the way everything's going to shake out: PlayStation Five, 500; Xbox Series X, 500. Because when we first saw the these initial, you know, when we first reported on this, this was supposed to be 6 million consoles shipped. Um, and they said that the range was anywhere between 450 and 487. And mm. remembering, wh- and that's without shipping or in handling. <laughs> so seeing where PlayStation is now, where I think that 450 and 480 price, you know, range was actually 450 was probably the lower tier was probably the digital version and the higher end 480 model was probably with the disc version. Mm -hmm. And I think PlayStation, if they don't have to move that price low because they're already, you know, these companies are taking a hit on these consoles, right? Like they are subsidizing these consoles for us. They could easily be 800, 900, but they're subsidizing it. Like back in the day, you could get a phone for $300. Believe that kids for a oh, nickel. Man. Uh, but like, <laughs> y- y- Listen, I, the amount of hours that America online I had back in the day, who boy, dude, I had like nine thousands. thousands. Yeah. <laughs> All the minutes on AOL kids, dude, it was great. So for me, I definitely think disc version PS five is 500 discless 400, uh, Xbox Series X 500. I'm still taking that very conservative route. And I think whatever the Lockhart is, is that 250, 300. Mm. But if it is a, a lower cost, like, you know, to me, I think, and maybe I'll lead this into a question. The console that they're able to take the biggest hit on is the discless, I think. Yeah. Right? Because they're trapping you into that ecosystem. You know, they don't have to pay games the GameStop tax. Mm-hmm. You know, they're making pure profit off of Miles Morales. They're going to be making more profit off of, you know, Assassin's Creed Valhalla when that comes out or any game. So I think they're able to take a hit on the console because they know they're going to get more in the mm-hmm. long run. So do you think when we're taking a look at the figure being somewhere in the 9 to 10 million production, what console is getting produced more? Is this an even split? Is this a 70-30? Where are we going here, Kyle? You make up you, you bring up a good point. Like I could see those additional units just being discless. Yeah. The whole staying at home, not going to the store, I, I think yeah, I could see those ba- those added units just being disc free. Mm-hmm. Just because it makes it, it'll, it'll put the the gamer at ease for those that don't want to go out or, or pay for shipping and and just have it downloaded right there. Like, yeah, that makes sense. It, it also is just like where the market's headed. Mm-hmm. But do you? But do you think like you? You don't have to give me a percentage here. But do, do you sure. think it's what's getting what's getting produced more? Do you think the disc version or discless? Uh, disc. Disc still. Yeah, I would probably say at a 60-40 split. I would say that, too. If I was you, that's what I'd be doing. I don't know yeah. about you. you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is a reason why they... I mean, we'll get to it later. They showed the box art. Yeah. They, yeah. they still have faith in that model, so... Yeah, okay. I definitely see. I, I got distracted because someone was just like, I have a motorcycle. Y'all want to hear it? <laughs> <laughs> vroom, vroom. It's like, yeah, it's cool, dude. Uh, yeah, no, I think I think that makes a lot of sense in how everybody kind of reacted. Hell, we'll just skip the story for a second. Let's just get right yeah. to it because you, you stated it. Uh, this was part of Flash News, but hey, Flash News, 
we now know what the covers of games look like <laughs> on the PlayStation 5. All right, everybody, if you're in your car, close your eyes. Don't worry, nobody's on the road anymore. You can do it, right? <clears throat> it is pretty much a PlayStation 4 box, but yep. where it said PS4, it says PS5, and yep. that blue bar is white. Mm-hmm. Now open your eyes. <laughs> Welcome. There you go. And, and that's what the boxes look like. Was it as exciting as the PlayStation 5 logo reveal? I hope so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. For those of you who don't know, close your eyes again. <laughs> okay. I, Imagine I'm, the PS4 logo. Yeah. All right. Someone pressed, wait for it, backspace? Okay, so <gasps> close your eyes. Okay. Oh, what, what, what's going to be added? Okay. Now they're pressing the number five. Open Whoa! Your eyes. Open your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! <laughs> so to me, I I like the look. Like in, it's one of these things where we're taking a look at box art, right? It's Sid Schumann's like, here is what the box art is gonna look like. It, to me, it's just like a moment of like, oh, it's happening. You know, it's like a reminder. Like this thing is yeah. getting r- mm-hmm. more real as days goes by. But you don't like the box art, Kyle? Why not? I don't. I okay. do, I do like the little PlayStation Studio logo at the bottom. Too. Oh yeah, it's right. Nice oh, sorry. Close your eyes again. <laughs> at the bottom right hand corner, <laughs> when you're looking at the box art dead on, if mm-hmm. it's made by a PlayStation Studio, it'll yeah. say PlayStation Studio or a partner. It says PlayStation. Oh, Studios. that's great. Open your that's eyes. Awesome. Again. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I'm not completely sold on it. Okay. Um, I think the reason why is because the box itself is still blue. Mm. I think that is my biggest holdup. Mm. Um, I get that blue is the accent color on the console itself. Yeah. But I would have loved a steel gray, kind of clear gray case. Okay. With the black header and the, the black or PS5 lettering. Like, I mm-hmm. think that would look really, really cool. I think the way they showed the Miles Morales case, I liked it a lot. Because it kind of shows the three colors that they're using for the PlayStation 5, which is Mm -hmm. blue, and then you have the the black bar on the side, and then you have the white bar on top, and it looks really nice that way. And then the black lettering, it just, it it gave me a sense of like, okay, this is not the most revolutionary change, but it's it's clean, it's nice. Um, Now, Kyle, I want you to close your eyes again. Oh, boy. I want want you to picture a hellscape, okay? The box is green. All right. Oh. Below oh. it, it says Xbox. <gasps> Xbox Series X. And then what? on the top right side, it says 4K mm-hmm. HDR. And then something else I just forgot. And then on the center, like almost near center, there's yeah. this huge goddamn emblem that says Optimize <gasps> for Series X. Oh, and there's a big badge on there? It's a huge badge, badge oh. Kyle. It, I don't know why they decided center right was going to be where they're going to put this thing. Yeah, I but see it. It's so distracting. And then down below, you have all the little, you know, studio emblems. It just oh. seems crowded and unnecessary. Do you want to live in that hellscape, rather? Can I open my eyes? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I yeah. think that is a really bad look uh, right, on the Xbox Series side. Uh, <laughs> side of the things it, it is but it's funny because like i'm like yeah i'm not a fan and i saw people like how dare you not be a fan of this you guys oh, are really a- yeah over was- a badge yeah everybody's freaking out it's Listen, like yeah it's I, ugly it's- and i just move on with my life <laughs> i don't i i think it i don't like the look of it at yeah. all but yeah. like it's fine it's again it's a graphic design choice yeah. that you don't like it's, it's not, not gonna be on my emblem like it's the emblem's no. not gonna be there when i put on the place it, it doesn't i'm not matter. getting optimized for series <laughs> x tattooed on my arm yeah <laughs> although i guarantee you a lot of people are gonna have that tattooed on them oh man <laughs> <laughs> poor life decisions that is you know uh real talk while we're on yeah. this subject here yeah i i had a conundrum after okay. the ubisoft show okay i was looking up you know the different tiers of Watch Dogs and Far Cry sure. and Assassin's Creed. And I saw, like, on Best Buy specifically, like, they would only allow you to pl- pre-order for either PlayStation or Xbox because they both work on PS4, PS5, yeah. Xbox One, Series X. Do I wait for the PS5 box, though? Ah, That is my... If okay. I'm going to be primarily playing right. on PS5... You want that box art. Do I wait for that box art with the white banner at top on the top? That's a good. That's a good. 
that's a good that's a good question i mean for me no and and, and even like let's 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 talk about the ubisoft thing for a second here all yeah. the games 60 bucks yeah and they're and it's 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 a free upgrade to your <clears throat> ps5 and your xbox one which so, makes me think 2k is smoking how dare you crack. 2K? i'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it really does seem like there is. I think some people are reading the room as to how they want to approach next gen. I don't think games may be seventy bucks. We don't know. I think that that's a, still a question mark right now. Yeah. Um. But yeah, in terms of like, no, just just buy it because just in case they're like, oh yeah, and the PS Five, PS you know, or sorry, Xbox Series X, ugly emblem. I'm just I'm trashing. To, <laughs> we're teasing, gang. We're teasing. This is a yeah. playful joke amongst friends. Your friends. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think that's where they're kind of probably preparing the bone. Yeah. So sure. I would say just get the PS4 box okay. and guess what? If you I don't mean, like I'm getting the, the steel book, no matter what. And, and that's like... the thing. Like we <laughs> argue about like, Oh, which box looks better? These stupid emblems. But like, to me, it's like at this point, if it's not a steel book, I'm not fucking with it. Sure. Just straight up. Steel books are the way to go. My, my other question would Basic be like, covers the... are trash anyway. If the PS5 and Series X version disc versions, right? Mm -hmm. Will they have? Will that just be the PS4 Xbox One code on there? And when you put it in, it'll no. download the upgrades. Or will everything be on that disc? Everything's on that disc. So, so again, that's the thing. I'm, I'm like, do I wait for that so I don't have to probably, worry about the patch? It's, it's probably going. Oh, Watch Dogs is in this disc, and it's. Probably smart delivery in terms of like, okay, grab watchdogs and then bam. Yeah. So you're mm -hmm. probably still mm -hmm. using the internet in some some fashion sure. to get the, exactly. that patch in. That's Which probably is... what it is. You're probably down downloading a patch after you download the game. That's yeah. Giving you all the assets in shape. Which is like leading me towards waiting for the PS5 physical box version. Like I maybe that's what it. Xbox people. Please help me out. Maybe that's what smart delivery is. Where it's just like, oh, this is Far Cry. This makes maybe more sense. Okay, so it's like you put it in your Xbox, and you're like, "This is Far Cry 6. and then it just downloads that patch as, as with the game itself. So that's maybe what just... I said. Yeah. But at least that's what I thought I said. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Smart delivery. The messaging is out the window with me, man. I'm not an Xbox dude. Someone will yell at me in the comments background. You yeah. idiot. So uh, simple. Since we're we're circling in it, yeah. right? Yeah. What What do you think of the Ubisoft show? Ah. Uh, you know what? The internet's a full of douchebags. <laughs> I agree. Because at the end of the day, like, how entitled are we? Uh, I've seen one or two people get really upset that this was a bad show and, like, yeah. bring back E3. But it's just like, dude, it's the age of Corona. Everybody's in disarray right yeah. now. Like, this is all on the fly. And they're giving you a really high production value for the age of Corona. Not everything's ready yet because everybody's working from home. I mm -hmm. thought it was fine. They showed me games yeah. that I was interested in. I'm gonna get Hellscape, like, or, or sorry, Hyperscape. I'm going to be getting um, Far Cry Six. Yeah, you know that racist dog, though. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, another. That's another controversy, <laughs> sadly. But like, I, uh, you know. I, uh, I, yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. I, sorry. I agree with you. I, I think it was fine. I had issues with, I guess, the presentation side of things. Like, the, we got 15 minutes of Watch Dogs. Um, mm -hmm. and, and back going back and forth between... Let me, let me step back. Not the 15 minutes was bad. Just the fact that we went gameplay or developer, the 15-minute chunk, and then back to another developer talking about making in-game assets right. and then move on to that it just felt a little weird like okay. have the developers talk beforehand and then yeah. show it off but like i'm in i was a little iffy on valhalla that totally sold me yeah um, dude it looked awesome everybody's like you look like shit I'm like oh no, no. no. I want it's what i wanted from dude. assassin's creed i wanted i wanted to see them the mystical like the piece of eden at level powerful stuff that's yeah. happening in the in in this universe watchdogs looks fun as all hell and uh, that far cry trailer was really really good look and at me Hector. that would have been such a dope reveal if it wasn't leaked yeah and i think like, that's the other thing if this wasn't leaked i think i think people would be like okay it was cool because the far cry we didn't think yeah. john carlo esposito would be you know blah 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 mm -hmm. um but yeah i thought it, i thought it was just you know fine and let's yeah. talk about something that people also think is just Fine. <laughs> it's their <laughs> next story on the list. 
Jonathan Dornbush from IGN writes, Marvel's Avengers beta date's second war table announced. Since its full unveiling back at E3 2019, Crystal Dynamics has promised a beta for the upcoming Marvel's Avengers. And now finally, we know what when that beta will take place. As part of IGN's continuing IGN first coverage to Marvel's Avengers, we can confirm the beta dates for Mar- Marvel's Avengers. August 7th, PlayStation pre-order beta access begins. August 14th, Xbox and PC pre-order beta access begins. PlayStation open beta also begins. August 21st, open beta across all platforms begins. Crystal Dynamics will be hosting a second War Table presentation on July 29th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time to detail what players can expect out of the beta. While we'll have to wait a few weeks for full details, Creative Director Sean Eskig, I'm sorry, Sean, if I said your last name wrong, did tease that the beta will include a little bit of everything. Campaign content, co-op missions, hero progression, and exploration in war zone and drop zones. The latter of which is a new kind of mission to be detailed in the war table. Mm-hmm. Quote, we built, that, we built the beta in such a way that you can experience most of the things that you'll be doing in the full game, SK said in a statement accompanying the announcement. That means playing a piece of the original single-player Avenger story campaign, fighting through co-op missions, experiencing hero and world progression, and exploring war zones and drop zones, a new kind of mission we'll talk about in the upcoming war table. This beta is meaty, and it's only a small part of the finished game, end quote. Awesome. We're getting to see the betas. I'm man. so ready. I'm are, very excited. Are you really? Yeah. Because like everybody's just like, oh, it looks... Mm. I, I've gone on record uh, when I played at Comic Con. Like yeah. I thought it was really fun. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm very excited for this. I think this is my kind of <sighs> looter shooter esque <laughs> type of game where I are we gonna find a live need- service game. So like I will I want to play those with other people. I want to be superheroes with a team of people and like yeah you <laughs> yes you I w- I want to go through and, and destroy I feel some like robots. I just pick for prom. <laughs> Oh my and god, what am I gonna wear? Oh my god. Ha- have my Thor be different from your Thor or mm-hmm. a whole you know, I think that's cool. Yeah. And they did say there's a couple of surprises too, so maybe more heroes, heroes. being shown off and what's the next who's the next hero you think? Black Panther. Dude, how dope would that be? Oh. Oh how so, dope would that so be, cool. dude? God, mm-hmm. I watched Black Panther the other day and it's like you re- you're like you're really watching it and it becomes a fact. It's like Winter Soldier and Black Panther are their best movies. Mm, Killmonger, yeah, dude. like Killmonger. Black the best Panther for guy. sure. Yeah, I yeah. agree with you on Black Panther. Oh wait, you're not Win- you're not a Winter Soldier guy. I'm a huge Winter Soldier okay, guy, cool. but I don't know if I would say it's the best of the best. What do you think is the best of the best? I mean, you're putting me on the spot right now. I'm trying to think of the go through. Oh, Ragnarok. I love Ragnarok. Ragnarok's Ragnarok. fucking incredible. That is top tier for me. <laughs> Like for me, like uh, what like, I what I say, not top tier is yeah. still like number three or four on my list. Right, like it's right. it's up there. To, like to me, like pat, like not not the like the ensemble stuff. I'm like just like the solo ish films. The solo stuff. It is to yeah. me like it's Winter Soldier. It is Black Panther. It is Spider Man Homecoming. It is Ragnarok. And Spider Man's there because I'm super biased. And it's also Tom Holland. Let's be honest. He's Nathan Drake. That's the thing that everybody. Oh yeah, it started filming by the way yeah. today or yesterday. So hey, it's not news. It's not going to happen. That's why I didn't put it in the notes. Um, but real talk, who do you think? Like you think it's Black Panther? Because I think it's Miles Morales. <sighs> See, I don't think so. I oh, don't Miles. think it's Miles. I think I they're going to try to stay away from Spider Man. <gasps> what if? Okay, Kyle. All right. Buckle up. I just got Are you are you about to tie in Spider Man on PS5 to this game? Everybody buckle up. If you're in your <laughs> if you're in your car, if you're at home listening, walk to your car. J- Seatbelts, kids, because I'm about to take you on a fucking <laughs> ride of your life. What if? Because Miles why is Miles alone? Did he did he go full Spider Verse? Or is there a bigger conflict where Peter has to leave? Mm. The Avengers call him up. Ring a ding ding, Peter. Yo, everything all right over there? How's that, my Oh, okay, come over here. And like, and so Peter's over there in San Francisco with with the Avengers gang. And Miles, the whole premise is he's he's protecting the city alone. Huh? Huh? 
Huh? I can see that. I can I can get on board with this. That, that sounds cool. cool. That's a cool theory. That's a game cool. theory, you know? <laughs> oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I'd be down for that. I'm also gonna trademark game theory. I think that I think saying it in that type no of one's, gonna... no one's ever nah. said said it that way, so mm-hmm. I think you're good. Also, can you trust a person that has two first names that has one name, Matt Pat? I can't. <laughs> really can't. Oh, what's your name? Matthew Patrick, get I, that man out of here. <laughs> I'm not going to say this person's name, but uh-huh. my first college roommate, freshman year, uh-huh. had three first names. First, middle, and last were three first names. You can't just say, I can't <laughs> name this person's name and have something outrageous like that. <laughs> I, I don't want... <laughs> Jeff, it Sean, was, like, Jim? <laughs> it was... Oh, I'll say... Whatever. You're not going to find him anyway. Yeah. Connor Patrick Kelly. You can't name. trust that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> CPK, you can't trust him. CPK, oh my god, that's what that's what I called him. CPK. Whoa, see, yeah, yeah. And it's, God, but yeah, I think that would be awesome. Then, then it gives you an excuse to why Spider Man's there, or I like, yeah, at least just cool. give me the white spider suit. Mm. Mm-hmm. I just want Spider Man. I just want to play a Spider Man again. <laughs> I mean, you I, can. I with will. The power of PlayStation. There's oh. Spider Man game ready for you. God, Whenever you want. I see it on your shelf, the seal book. I, I see know. it. But, but, you know, it's only five to ten hours long, which means it's a bad game. Have you ever played the DLC? Yeah. All of it? Mm hmm. All of it. Oh, okay. All right. Just checking. Yeah. Some crazy things happen. All right. With that, Marvel's. So we're going to be playing the beta together. Hell yeah, we are. And that beta on August 7th. Hell yeah. You're going to be Thor. I'm going to be Hulk. Gladiator Hulk. Sure. All right. Deal. And people, uh, you know, go into the Discord. We want to partner up with you guys and play games together. Let's do it. Let's make it a date. August 7th. Write you it down what? in your let's, notes. Let's go a step further. I'm going okay. to write it down right here. And when I write it down, it's set in stone. <sighs> Shit. <laughs> we are streaming us playing this beta. Okay, well then you have to stream it because I have I no will capability. absolutely do that. We and are streaming I, the beta. When I mean I have no capability, I mean I absolutely have the capability. I'm just incompetent. <laughs> well, it's perfect timing because I did just get my Elgato. Ooh, so okay. it's capable. So yeah, we'll right. we'll stream the Avengers beta yeah. of us fooling around and. August 7th, join us in the heroes. trophy room. Yeah. We'll figure out what Twitch channel. Don't want you worry about that. Yeah, That's behind the scenes <laughs> stuff. I'll remember my password and everything. Hey, <laughs> Kyle, I wrote in the hey. notes that this this title's for me, but you're going to read everything else, okay? That's fine. All right, I'm works. dyslexic. Words are hard. <clears throat> Ghost of Tsushima reviews are up. And by the way, you can check out our spoiler-free review preview with Brock McLaughlin over in the last episode. So if you're on Spotify, just like slide left, bam, we're there again. It's 31 minutes of goodness. And then we talk about Tony Hawk for three minutes at the end. It's great. But yeah. you know what? We got some other people saying some things. Kyle, would you like yeah. to read them reviews? Absolutely. Mitchell Saltzman from IGN gave Ghost of Tsushima a nine. Ghost of Tsushima is an enormous and densely packed samurai adventure that often left me completely awestruck with both both its visual spectacle and excellent combat. By steadily introducing new abilities instead of stat upgrades, its swordplay manages to stay challenging, rewarding, and fun throughout the entire 40 to 50 hours that it took me to beat the campaign. A few aspects are surprisingly lacking in polish in comparison to other first-party Sony games especially when it comes to enemy AI and the stealth part of its stealth-slash-action split. Mm-hmm. Still, this is an extraordinary open-world action-adventure action adventure game that solves several issues that have long gone unaddressed in the genre, while also just being an all-around samurai slashing good time. Yes. Kirk, Kirk McKean from VG247 gave it a 7. It has its moments, but like Jin Sakai in the opening hours, the past holds it, holds it back. It's open world, the video game. It's far too easy. Wait, hold on. It's open world, the video game, period. Ah. It's far too easy, too. The lack of consequence for failure makes it feel like you're just going through the motions. If you'll excuse the wind-based pun, pun, it's a breeze. While playing it, I often found my mind wandering. By the third and final act, I just wanted it to be over. Like the samurai, Ghost of Tsushima feels like a relic of a bygone era. Easy Allies gave it an 85. 
Ghost of Tsushima has a lot going for it. Combat is fast and fluid, and the story is engaging thanks to some great characters. Most disappointing is that taking a stealthy approach can sometimes make victory feel simple and unearned. Despite that, the island itself is the biggest draw, taking you on a captivating adventure through its beautiful world. And out of the 70 plus reviews, sorry, 80 plus reviews at this point, Mm -hmm. um, 89 to be exact. I don't like to brag via Metacritic and Metacritic means if, listen, if a game's 90 or below, it's already a failure. So apparently, (laughs) uh, out of the 89 reviews, 80 of which are positive. So that means it's an eight or above and nine is mixed, none negative. So actually, I picked the VG247 one because it sounded the most negative out of all of them. Yeah. So with that, Kyle, mm-hmm. we've seen the reviews of this game. It's pretty dang positive. You've yeah. heard Brock McLaughlin talk about it. Mm-hmm. We're thrilled. On, I mean, I'm thrilled on oh, this game. I'm Where so you? excited. You're, you're I'm so board? excited. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, even more excited that it's part of my fantasy critic team against you. So like, you know. Hey, uh, <laughs> things are looking good on Casa de Bad Bits side right here, man. Uh, but yeah, the, I think these are great reviews. I, I love what they say about each of each of them. And but talking to Brock and hearing his comparison to the combat being Arkham like has me so so excited. Um, and I just want to get lost in this colorful, beautiful landscape. Which is such a huge difference from The Last of Us Part Two. That's like I'm, re- I'm ready to just go through these fields of flowers and take pictures and follow foxes and these golden birds to secret areas. <laughs> like I'm ready. I'm just ready. When I, I I saw Skilled Up's review and I saw a few others talking about this game and hearing Brock talk about it, uh, a lot of them do reference. Um, they do reference Arkham elements of how the combat feels. And when I'm seeing, you know, the one thing that we talk about, there's a goddamn motorcycle again. You heard that, right? I heard it that time. Yeah. The audience might have as well. That was, come on, guy. Why? Anyway, back to the PlayStation podcast. Um, But like seeing the enemies and how they fight, like it is, it is a game where one or two slashes kills an enemy. It seems maybe three, but you have to break their guard, and that's how you're able to get more slashes. And it actually feels like like the collision in this game so far from what I've seen is fantastic. It really does seem like you're having a sword fight with people, and that swords actually carry weight, and they are extremely deadly, and they're not just nerf nerf blades. So I I'm really digging it. Um, mm-hmm. or sorry, what I. What I've seen, I've really dug. Um, I don't want to give the illusion like I've played this earlier or anything. The most famous Seamus I've ever met in my entire life, though, and I say that confrontationally because I dare you to pick someone who's a Seamus who's more famous. I double dog dare you, motherfucker. Try me. Cool. <laughs> very aggressive on that one. <laughs> very. I'm very protective of Seamus. All right. With that, how much do you think Ghost of Tsushima will sell? Are we looking at a Last of Us Part Two levels of sales or lower? This is a great question. Yeah. Because it's coming off the heels of The Last of Us, a huge game that's going to sell, sold extremely well, $4 million in a single day. I also added uh, Benji Sales, friend of the show, he tweeted, I'm very curious how Ghost of Tsushima's performs compared to Horizon Zero Dawn. It's tracking strong. Horizon is the fastest selling new IP for PlayStation Studios this generation. Milestones are 2.6 million units sold in two weeks, 7.6 in one year, 10 plus million in two years. He also says, given the fact that there are more units in the wild now for Ghost, that gives it a bit of an advantage. Where do you see Ghost of Tsushima tracking? Do you see it in the 2 million range in two weeks type of deal or something more? I think the 2 million is probably a good get, yeah. a good bet. Um, sadly, I feel like Samurai is not a Samurai game is not everyone's cup of tea. Right. Um, and especially like comparing to Last of Us having such a strong lineage and history in PlayStation already. Um, I don't think it will come close to the Last of Us Part Two levels of se- of selling, mm-hmm. but I think it's still gonna it's still gonna sell fairly strong. I I'm I would be one to agree with you, 
Uh, I do think it's going to be, it's going to sell really well. I think it may beat Horizon Zero Dawn uh, mm-hmm. in terms of unit sell because we're in the age of Corona. The yeah. Rona, as a kid said. And uh, in the simple fact that we have so much time on our hands, and that may be a contributing factor to why it sells better in the West. But I'm also th- thinking in Japan how well this game is going to sell because Famitsu gave this game a perfect score. And it's only given, uh, uh, I think, three other games a perfect score along with it. So that's why I'm thinking this this game is going to do really well in Japan. I think mm-hmm. it's going to do well here in the States and in Europe as well. I don't think it's going to be as as big in terms of like Horizon there, but I think in Japan it, it it'll. I think it's. I'm talking in circles here. I think it's going to do really well because so many people have time on their hands, mm-hmm. and because yeah, uh, you know, Famitsu in Japan gave it such high high ratings, and I think with more PS4s out in the wild, and then with the PS5 coming we can assume there's going to be a boost mode for Ghost and a boost mode for The Last of Us and stuff like that, that mm-hmm. this thing will only sell as the holiday comes. So, yeah I, yeah, I do think we're going to see... I would be bullish to say we're going to see at least 3 million units sold in the first Damn. week or two. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm really rooting for this game, and I'm, as a kid saying, standing for it right now. I'm a Ghost <laughs> of Tsushima stan, man. So uh, Nakachaka! writes in they ask this question what do you want next from sucker punch ghost of tsushima 2 another infamous game or a brand new ip kyle i bring this to you because you love infamous i love sucker punch and you love sucker yeah. punch oh man so reading this question um I w- i'm thinking did any has any studio gone back to back with two new brand brand new ips from from PlayStation, just yeah. Technically, have, Horizon's doing it right now. They did Horizon One, and now they're doing Horizon Two. But that's what I mean. It's not mm. another brand new IP. It's in the same franchise. Oh, oh right, right, right. Okay, so you're thinking brand new IP? Well, that's out of the question. Like I, w- I was thinking like Naughty Dog went from Uncharted, but then they did Uncharted Two. Sucker Punch did Infamous, Infamous Two. Like, where is has anyone gone? Back to back brand new IPs, and I, I, no. I don't think I can think of. Yeah, so yeah, unless Ghost doesn't do well, sure, then there's a which chance, I don't think. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I uh, I don't see this game being anywhere of a failure. Yeah, I 100 percent think another Infamous game. Mm. Um, I just Infamous is tied to PlayStation. Uh, Sucker Punch, those games are feel so good to play. I think they're only learning and. From what Ghost, their experience on Ghost, so I can't imagine what the next Infamous game would be. Yeah. Hopefully it's with Cole. Hopefully get a, an actual ending with Cole. Um, but yeah, I think they go back to Infamous before then Ghost 2. I think they're going to go with Ghost again, man. I, thi- uh-huh. I think they're going to go, yeah, I think they're going to do what, what works. I, I Not to say that like Second Son didn't light the world on fire, but it wasn't sure. like the... A defining moment in this generation. For I, I'm yeah. gonna be ballsy to say well, that. Well, like, it, it was a, la- a lunch window game. Yeah, so. and so for me, I definitely think if Ghost does extremely well, there's no reason why they wouldn't make a Ghost too. Um, and just seeing that's where, also like we don't yeah. even know if it sets up a sequel. Yeah, it, I mean, like we were saying at the beginning of the of the ge- uh, of the review, where it's like the the Japanese and mongrel conflict ends really fast. So how yeah. do you how do you squeeze that in? So <clears throat> who, by the way? But yeah, uh, at the end of the day, I, I do think we're going to see another uh, uh, Ghost of Tsushima if this is successful. And all of a sudden, towards the end of the show, I'm just like, let me just talk in circles because I think that's great <laughs> for some reason. But not get. I'm rubbing off on you. No, no, don't you dare say that. Uh, <laughs> Gang, everybody, thank you for your questions this week. We were able to fit them all in the show on Natural. So there's no Andy snail mail this week. I gave him a week off. I felt like he earned it. Okay? Because usually each and every week, I go over, I swim on over. Backstrokes. We're still, we're still getting it this week? Even though yeah. you didn't steal from him? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, cause, uh, so I backstroke my way to England, walk on over, and I knocked on his door and I said, hey, not this week. And he kind of, the, the grimace turned into like a half smile. Nice. Yeah. 
then the sitcom montage starts the the beginning of your your sitcom show yeah. where you just hand and then hands, I took a vase and I street. ran the fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, since there's no drop, some quick flash news. PS5 update, update upgrade alert. These are games that are going to be coming on your PlayStation 4 and cross by into your PlayStation 5. So if you play them, if you be, if you play these games on your PS4 or bought these games on your PS4, they'll carry over to your PS5. And it goes as follows. Dirt 5 is getting a PS5 free upgrade. Watch Dogs Legion free PS5 upgrade. Assassin's Creed Valhalla free upgrade. And Far Cry 6 free upgrade. Kyle? Can I f- follow up to those real quick? Yeah, go for it. Are they going to say cross progression? Because I'm going to be real bummed if I decide to play Valhalla beforehand and then have to do that all over again. Going to probably have to do it all over again. Uh, see, so Th- that's that's play. the smart delivery. Now maybe that's the smart delivery. Because Xbox, <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to get it. Okay, we're not smart. <laughs> this is why we're not an Xbox show. Anybody who owns like Xbox covers it. They're like, we were what? delivered dumb. We weren't delivered smart. Yeah, I, we listen. I I know for a fact. I was I was a breach birth. So like I get it, but <laughs> not enough air in that womb. Here's the thing. I know on Xbox they gave out this huge press release where they're just like, your games saves will carry over. Maybe, maybe it'll carry over on PS5 if you have like a, a cloud save, like if you're on PS Plus. But if mm-hmm. you're not, it, you know, then I, I don't think that carries over at all. Because that's the thing that I'm excited about with Avengers, because they did say cross progression will carry over. So yeah. that gives me some hope, but mm-hmm. I don't want to start playing these massive games. Breach Birds are when feet are first, right? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Everybody. Wow. This was an over an hour long. We don't have any time for what you've been playing. Last one's part two. Gold from Platinum. There you go. Yeah, I'm at the point where I'm just, wa- like, I'm literally just patiently waiting for Ghost. Yeah, I, I, I'm I rushing through it, so I'm ready for Ghost. I want to get it done before Ghost. You will, and you shall. Uh, next week, I will be t- we'll have our Ghost you know impressions over at Patreon.com slash BadBit. Um, and next week, I should be... I feel really bad, because I asked for a code for Disintegration. I have yet to play it, uh, mm. f- or beaten it, rather. Um, because of the whole surgery thing happened out of nowhere. So we'll talk about that on next week's show. I'll give you my Iron Man thoughts as well, all that next week. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about ghosts as well. It's going to be a fun episode next week, just like how it was this week, Kyle. And hey. with that, will you have the plug for us, Kyle, before we get on out of here? Yeah. Who that Ninja 73 on Twitter and on PSN. Uh, go check out my Twitter. I made some exciting news today. So go check that out. It's very, very fun. Um, Don't tell him. Just leave him on a cliffhanger. I'm not going to. Ooh, uh, now and, you have to look. You hit up at KindaNYC on Twitter and KindaNYC.com to find our other shows we do there. And yeah, be safe. Wear your damn mask. <laughs> and love you. There you go. And you can find this show over at YouTube dot com slash bad bit games uh where i cover all things game news reviews and unboxings and again you find the video version of the show there you can find the trophy room over at apple podcasts google play spotify wherever you find your podcast you can find us there if you're able to review us if you could drop us a five-star review that really really does help us out and this week this week was a really fun show man because we didn't have a lot of news but the news was there it was fun i liked it yeah I hope you all liked it too. So with all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody keep hunting and keep playing PlayStation.